Welcome to Central News. My name is Tim Masemola. Today we are in the Midvan, one of the best performing municipalities in Gauteng. We are going to be talking to the mayor himself. We are going to be talking about few issues when it comes to finances, when it comes to projects that they have, the development of SMMEs and many others. Dr. Texera, welcome to Central News. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, can, can, can you take us through? Uh, since you got into office, what have, what have been your, your achievements and the challenges, basically? Look, the achievements have been many, um, in a sense that um, we have grown our capital budget in the municipality from around 1.5 billion rand to 1.8 billion. Okay. And 75% uh, of our budget is focused on improving infrastructure. Mm. So when I came into office, um, you know, there they are some projects uh, that I identified that are key to me, certain areas that are in need of development. And uh, part of those areas is your scale of township. I think we, we're going to have a, a more in-depth discussion about that. Okay. Um, a lot of improvement has gone into that area, of which I'll mention a bit later, areas like Mamelo, Lakeside di Malbone. Uh, those are areas that are underdeveloped, that yes. I felt that we need to focus on as a municipality. Um, so I'm very excited that our budget has grown, so it means that I can, f I can actually implement uh, uh, on, or implement projects in, tho in those particular areas. Mm -hmm. so, so part of the achievements is, has been the completion of a substation in Sikelo. This is a 25 megawatt substation, mm -hmm. which will give us capacity to electrify uh, not only Sikelo, but also grow our area, the western side of, of, of this municipality, but also completing the 10 megalitre reservoir, water reservoir. Yeah. So uh, that this is also to boost capacity, ensure that we have sufficient uh, water supply for a growing Midval, because Midval municipality is one of the fastest growing municipalities in Gauteng. And we're seeing an influx of people that are coming in to Midfall, you know, seeking a better life, better future, because they read about us, they see the good work that we that we are doing. So there are many projects um, that uh, have materialized since the beginning of my term. Um, there are a few challenges um, that uh, that I've already uh, mentioned, like you know, mm -hmm. in terms of improving your underdeveloped areas. Mm -hmm. I think those in the main are what we're going to be foc mm -hmm. focusing on. You spoke about the substation. Previously, yeah. did you have maybe challenges when it comes to the infrastructure? Uh, that is why maybe you said, let us give the attention and make sure that our people get water. Because if you don't have electricity, it will also affect the reservoirs. Did you have any challenges when it comes to that? Yes, there was challenges. Um, Stelo is, is also an area which is uh, growing very quick, very fast. Mm. Um, and you know, I often get asked by people, why, why is there so many people in such a small uh, area that are residing there. Now, yeah. why Stelo is growing and is attractive to a lot of people is that if you look at the, the location where it is situated in, it is very close to your transport nodes. So if you are in Stelo, you can walk from Stelo into the Mayerton town, CBD. If you are in mm -hmm. Stelo, you can walk to the train station uh, yes. and catch a train. It's two minutes. If you are in Stelo, you can walk to the taxi rank yeah, in the CBD. So automatically it makes it an, an attractive area to live in for many people. So we are seeing people coming from all over. The Free State, Limpopo, all over the country that are coming to reside in that area. So as a municipality, we needed to start putting plans in place to ensure that in terms of services, we have capacity to accommodate that influx of people that are coming into yes. our area. This is why we then developed that substation to ensure we can provide electricity. We developed the reservoir so we can provide water. We even upgraded our sanitation, our sewer network in the area where we are able to provide those particular services. But mm -hmm. now what we are also looking at is issuing out service stands. That, that was part of our master plan initially, is to say, instead of just waiting for the Department of Human Settlements as a province to come and build RTP houses for our people, yes. I believe that let's issue site and service. Let's give you a stand. Let's give you a 250 square, square meter uh, stand, stand, service stand, where you have a water connection, sewer connection, electricity connection. If you have a financial muscle, you can build your own house. If you don't, you can put up your shack and wait for the Department of Human Settlements to build your house. I must just say that um, 
the the building of RDPs, we are not accredited to 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 construct RDPs. So it's a mm. provincial competency, not a local yes. municipality competency. Yes. It looks like you are going to be having projects in terms of developing this municipality. And mm. when somebody is listening, you will be saying, "Let us directly go into finances." Our local municipalities they seem to be having a very serious challenge in terms of managing finances. Yes. And for the past nine years, you've been getting a clean audit. What is it that you're doing differently? Are there other measures that you said, let us introduce this to maybe help our also employees to be able to run the municipality properly? Look, for the, the, the secret is very simple. So there's, a, there's, number one, there's political will to get things done, right? The second part of it is that we have an administrative office which is led by the municipal manager. Then we have a political office which is led by myself as the executive mayor. Now I don't interfere in the running okay. of the administration. So I work also according to legislation. And for me, it is to give the political direction of this institution. And, yeah. and also the MM has to give me advice according to the law. And that's how we work here in Midva. So yeah. we've put systems in place that ensure that it is not about Peter Texera or Bongani Baloi, or whoever will come after us. Their systems are so strong, they are instilled in every employee here of yes. what needs to be done, uh, yeah. accountability measures that have been put in place. Mm. And this is what gets us the clean audits year in, year out. Mm. It's because it's not about individuals. So we're not getting a clean audit because of me or yes. because of my predecessor and those that came. It's because of the strong culture that we've instilled in Midval in the mm. employees. They know what needs to be done. And there's accountability yes. as well. Accountability is very strong, mm. so it, very important. So that is something that uh, I think that some of the municipalities, the failing municipalities in the country mm. don't have. They are lacking accountability. So here, if anybody is involved in corruption, there is consequence management for that. Something okay. happens. There's no just a slap on your wrist and an eye. Don't do it again. Yeah, there's consequence management. We deal with people that, that involve themselves uh, mm -hmm. in, Ill in illegal activities. Yeah. Um, I think because of that, this is what gives us all these accolades year in, year out. Um, but also our residents are also paying their rates and taxes. Mm -hmm. They are contributing towards the municipality's uh, fiscus. Now, we get around a 90% payment rate from the, from the residents. Now, at 90%, it shows you that we have money in the bank. But why they are paying is because they know their money is safe with us. It's not the mayor who's now going to go in and reach himself and drive these luxury cars, smoke expensive cigars and, and yes. cognac, I was, all these type of things, you know. I was also <laughs> going to ask you about that, to say yeah. many municipalities are struggling in terms of revenue collection. Yes. And uh, we are also having a high unemployment rate in the country. Yes. So, and you are saying now you've got 90% of people Collection, who are yes. paying. Right. What is it that we're doing? There must be something new. There must yeah. be something different. Look, there's a strong credit control system that we've put in place. Um, but also, having said that, with the, with the system that we have in place doesn't really, uh, I wouldn't say it's because of that system that the people are paying. The people are paying because they can see where their money is going. So other municipalities, the community, the residents don't want to pay because where is their money going? The, the roads are riddled with potholes. There's no service delivery. Waste is collected once every second month. Why are people going to pay? So from a midfall point of view, we, we've got a system. We've got systems in place. For example, every resident is, built, is, is metered. That's the first thing. So there's a, there's, a, there's a water meter. There's electricity meter. We know who you are, where you are. If you don't pay, there are measures we put in place. We give you warnings, mm -hmm. we restrict, uh, or we, we, we cut you off on your electricity, uh, uh, and, and so on, to get you to pay. Because also, uh, you know, the culture of non-payment is a serious problem that we as South Africans face. Um, there are people that uh, view the municipality as a by-the-way type of institution. So the person will pay their bond, installment first, pay their vehicle, pay the DSTV multi-choice first, and then the municipality last. How is the municipality supposed to 
now yes. uh, provide services to the people. Yeah. So that is a challenge. But here in Midvale, people are confident. They they can see where their money is going. And this this is why it's easy for us to collect. Let us go straight to the issue of ESCO and rainwater. Many municipalities are str struggling when it comes to the two, more especially ESCO. We've seen that we are, we are even struggling with load shading presently in the country. And some municipalities, they owe ESCO over $2 billion. Mm. As the municipality, the Midvale, when it comes to ESCOM and rainwater, where are you standing? <laughs> we don't owe them a cent. So we pay on time. Um, you know, we've never owed ESCOM or rainwater. Instead, ESCOM owes us money on property rates. Uh, it's a very minimal amount, but, you know, 300,000. No, no, it's, it's on, on property where they are okay. stationed in our jurisdiction. Okay. So, so it's property rates to the value of around two to three hundred thousand rand, which is they do pay. Sometimes yeah. they delay, they do pay. So we we, we don't owe them. Um, we are financially stable, like I said. Our resident pay, so we absolutely don't owe. We got a very good working relationship with both Rainwater and ESCOM. And, um, you know, yeah, it's something that, uh, uh, you know, I get surprised when I read about it in the newspapers yes. that municipalities owe um, you know, these institutions, and yet they've used the service. That's what even surprises me more, because ESCOM yeah. has provided electricity to your area, but now you can't pay them, and then you want to blame ESCOM. You know, I say this to you because I'm very vocal about it in our um, premier's coordination forums that we have in the province, where yeah. when municipalities, other mayors start raising it, I say, but the service was rendered to you. Yes. Yes. You know, so I say things like that, uh, uh, to, you know, but we, 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 we are okay, we are fine with them, we don't have any problems. Mm. Um, we got a good working relationship and, you know, I've been very, very vocal about the incentive or the, um, the you know, the incentives that should be given to municipalities that are paying on time. Yeah. So now they want to write off the debt to those municipalities. What about yeah. us? So is government saying that I must also go in, must I also not pay ESCOM? Then after so two that, years we can okay. write it off. Yes. One of the things <laughs> that I wanted to ask you about, you, you, you seem to be priding yourselves with beautiful parks that you have. Yeah. And your students seem to be going to those parks. What is it that you can say about them? What is different about them? So one of the first things uh, I said when I came into office was I want to create an environment where people can enjoy outdoor activities. You know, we all know about the criminal elements that we are facing, that South Africans face on a daily basis. People have become more indoors. They are staying in their homes for various reasons. So I wanted to create this environment where, you know, where you can go and relax, take your dog for a walk, go for a jog, you know, take your kids to a park, um, go and have a picnic, go outdoors, instead of always being confined in that small space, you know, uh, or at your home, in your property all the time. And I felt that we, we, we need to create a recreational facility, so not only just a park with play equipment. Mm -hmm. I said, why don't we also fit your, your outdoor joy, uh, uh, gym equipment, where we can get both the children and the adults to enjoy these outdoor spaces. So we've been developing parks. There's one in uh, Mayer Street in Mayerton Park area, and uh, we, we installed uh, some play, uh, gym equipment there, some play equipment, some benches. We planted some trees. We yeah. put some irrigation systems. So our parks even got irrigation systems, so we water the grass there. So they are beautiful uh, areas where all our residents can go out and enjoy themselves, but yes. both the young and the elderly. You, spoke, you also spoke about the influx, people coming into the municipality, and it simply tells you that the number of the people is going to increase. But let us check the tourism, se the tour the tourism sector. After COVID-19, the sector suffered a lot. Are you maybe as the municipality trying to boost the sector? And what is it that you are doing? Yeah, look, we, we are, our local economic development office is working around the clock to try to um, you know, attract more people coming into the municipality. So we are packaging, we, want, we are packaging an experience for somebody to come into Midval. So when, you, we, we, when we talk about tourism, what is there to do in Midval? What yes. can I do? How can I come bring my family, mm. spend a weekend here? What is there to do? 
So we've got areas like your sacred post nature reserve, where you can go out on, um, you know, you, you, you can do hiking there, you, there's chalets you can sleep over, you can go and view wild animals, uh, you can go bike riding, we've got the Val Dam, we've got the Clip River. You know, I still don't understand why people still go to Harte Biersport uh, Dam. We've mm. got the Val Dam right here. You know, mm. we've got all those facilities. You're looking for water sports, something to do, uh, you know, get on a boat or a jet ski. It can be done right here. So we are packaging. What the municipality is doing is we're packaging an experience mm -hmm. that we can give to you and say mm -hmm. Central News, here's what you can do, here's a document, look at what you can do in Midfa. And um, there's still a lot more to do. Um, if you had to ask me, are you doing enough? I would say no. Mm -hmm. We need to do more to try mm -hmm. to attract people to come into our area, um, spend the weekend in B&Bs, the hotels that we have, and enjoy what we have to offer here. Because that will also even grow us residentially. When you come and visit, you may be tempted to say, hey, I love this area, maybe let me buy a property here. So we're working hard in, in terms of um, attracting or, you know, uh, uh, people to come into our area. And also because when people come and enjoy themselves here, it also boosts our local economy. Yes. You know, because you, you, are, you are eating here at the restaurant, you are sleeping here, you are doing all those things. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I think lots, of work, lots more work still needs to be done. Mm -hmm. A lot of people, they will view Democratic Alliance as, because you are priding yourself as the best performing financially and mm -hmm. otherwise, but people will be coming and saying, no, go to the very same municipality where the black people are residing. You will see there's still lack of service delivery there. So yeah. what is it that you can say, no, no, no? Even though we are a democratic-led municipality, but go to these black areas whereby maybe other races are staying, we are doing very well. And what are those projects that we're doing? Yeah, look, uh, I think it's, it's just a perception in society. I mean, you know, it's similar to your Cape Town. When you talk about the successes of Cape Town, they refer That's you to Kaili. Yeah. You know, so when you talk about successes of Midval, they talk about Strel. But what they don't tell you is yeah. that the municipality is investing a lot of money in bulk infrastructure development in your previously disadvantaged areas. Now I'm not going to focus on Stelo only, I'm going to look at uh, our previously disadvantaged areas. Now I, I mentioned to you earlier that we're seeing growth in the Stelo uh, area. A lot of people are coming in because of its attractive location where it is. Mm. So some of the people there, you, you still find informal settlements there. If you look at the people that are residing in those informal settlements, a large number of them are, are foreign, foreigners that are still living there, whether illegal or legal, I, I can't tell you at this stage, um, that do not qualify for an yeah. RTP housed by government. But you also find those that are residing there that have already benefited maybe in Kwato or in Sesheh or in Limpopo, who's already got an R RTP house there. So they know Guti, they cannot get an, a, a, another exactly. house here. So they prefer, because they work closely here in the CPD, let me stay in, in, in a shack or in Kuku, let me live there. Because then they don't need to go out and rent and pay a certain amount. Yeah. So, so we've, we've been improving infrastructure in those areas. We've spent millions of rents. The substation I told you about, the reservoir I told you about. Recently, I, ins I, I installed electricity for a formal part of Skelo that we formalized. We did a re-blocking mm -hmm. because the area was conge congested uh, 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 with a whole lot of people uh, 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 residing in a very small space. So we re-blocked, we started a process of re-blocking, we moved people to a new site, we gave them stands, and then what we did is we fitted water, we fitted electricity, like I said, the site and service, and now we've, we, 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 we've even put street lights for them. So we're doing our best to improve the area. Mm -hmm. uh, it is difficult as well because of uh, the influx of people coming in and what I said about people that do, do not qualify. Mm -hmm. We're working hand in hand with the Department of Human Settlements to address the situation. But if you go to Skelon now, it looks much better than it was a couple of years back. Yeah. There are still areas, we've got your extension 4 and extension 5, that we, we, we also still need to improve. And we are working very closely to get land that has bulk services. Because, mm -hmm. you know, there's no point you put people in a piece of land that's not serviced, where there's no, no, no services at all. Exactly. You put them there, they are happy that particular for the first two months, 
The third month, they start, they start to protest. Now they want services. Yes. With the influx of people within the municipality, obviously crime is going to be one yeah. of the factors that will, or that will be maybe affecting you. And we know that it is not your core function as the municipality to combat crime. There are other departments as well. But yeah. as the municipality, what is it that we're doing to, to contribute to, towards combating crime? So every financial year, we invest around 7.7 .7 million rand that goes towards fighting crime. Now, when we talk about f fighting crime, we talk about the empowerment of even CPFs, the community policing forums, neighborhood watches, the greater security cluster. Yes. So we said as a municipality, we cannot leave the South African police services mm -hmm. on their own to fight crime. What are we doing as government to mm -hmm. assist in, in combating crime? So this is why we then put aside that budget where we are capacitating or empowering our CPF to, you know, with your two-way radios, torches, uh, uh, perps and and even CCTV cameras. So when you came into Midval, yes, our our control room picked you up coming in. If your vehicle that came into Midval was involved in a crime elsewhere, it it will make a loud a, a loud noise inside the control room where it will automatically alert the CPF, the police, and the greater security cluster to say that this, 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 this car has been involved in a crime, and then this is when they go after you. So all that, those systems we've put in place as a municipality, and that system is also being used by the police, the South African police services. So they come to us and request footage, they go into our control rooms, we've allowed them access. So we are providing them with this. Um, even uh, MEC Faith Mazubuku uh, uh, commended us on, on, on that because we, we, we've invested so much to ensure Midval is safe. Mm -hmm. We've given our CPFs even thermal heat drones. So we've got these expensive drones that they fly up in the air. It picks up, it detects body heat. So at night, if you are in a rural area and you've stolen, for example, cattle uh, 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 and you are hiding it in the bush, mm -hmm. when they launch that thing in, it picks you up. It shows, it will be red, it shows that this is where they are hiding the animals or mm. this is where the criminals are hiding. So that is an investment that we, 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 we have put in to combat crime as Midfile and it's working very, very well. We've had many success stories. They, we, we foiled uh, your cash in transit uh, 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 activities here in Henley on Clip, hijacked trucks that came from the N3 trying to get to the R59 because of those cameras and also because of our relationship that we formed with our CPF. So by a click of my button, I can mobilize 2,000 CPF members that are active within the area from your Stelo, Lakeside, Reciville, Golf Park, all over, we've come together to combat crime. One of the biggest uh, problems in the country presently is the rate, the rate of unemployment. Young people are not working. And mm -hmm. as the municipality, are you having a solution towards that? We've seen government coming up with a CWP program trying to, to combat crime. But as the municipality, what is your contribution towards unemployment? Yeah, look, because of good governance, in Midval, um, it's made it easier for us to attract investment. Now, in order to create jobs for our people, we need to ensure that we are attracting the industry. Businesses are coming up and opening doors in Midval. So, because we understood that we can't create all the jobs for our people, we need the private sector also involved to come and play their role in terms of growing society. Now, you know, we cut red tape here for business development. So. The turnaround times in land use applications have been shortened here in Midfall. Um, when investors come knocking to us, we roll out the red carpet to them to try to fast track the process. Because one of the biggest frustrations developers have is that, um, you know, the red tape in municipality and government, it takes sometimes months to years just to get an approval to build or construct a business. Now here in Midfall, we've got a, we've got a retention, uh, business retention committee that sits down and, and, and considers applications so they can give you a decision right there. Because now you will find in that committee, there's your infrastructure official, there's your town planning official from all the departments where the, the application would normally rotate and that's what delays the whole process. So we, we, we work very, we collaborate with, the, with local businesses to ensure that they are also employing local people. 
So we've got good working relationships with the likes of Heineken, who is based in our municipality, your Ferrero Rocher, your South 32, all these big companies where we are saying to them, please employ local people, take yeah. our people. And we work well with the councillors to who also draw up your database and lists of unemployed people with their CVs, their skills that they have, and so on. And I think that is working, in a sense, working very hard for us. But we are also empowering your SMMEs, for example, local yeah. businesses. So we say when we, when, when we um, employ contractors that come in to work for us, yeah. there's always got to be a local beneficiation for the community. And part of it is also some subcontra subcontractual work that locals can also benefit in. So if we are building a new road, for example, the, the subcontractor will do the capstones, the cabbing on the roads. Yes. They will provide maybe the TLB, some of the, the equipment. So we are very strict when it comes to, to things of that nature. This is why we've got one of the lowest unemployment yes. uh, rates in the country is here in Midval because most of our people are employed. In terms of going extra mile, you spoke about develop, development of SMMEs. People mm -hmm. of Arava say when it comes to maybe black people, women and people with disability. Because you will find sometimes there's a tender and they, they need some mm. contractors. And they will say maybe these are the requirements. And you find that most of our people, they don't even qualify. How do you make sure that yeah. they grow as time goes on? Because it can be, it can be correct that they only get a certain uh, yeah. businesses and then the rest they have been given to big companies. Look, we, the, our development and planning in our finance department regularly has these SMME summits that we have in our town hall where we actually capacitate our SMMEs and we inform them what it is that or how to do business with the municipality. Because you find at times that our local businesses, you know, they are not compliant, they, they'll, be, they, they'll be missing a tax certificate, for example, or they don't have, their costing is not correct, they don't know how to cost, and that automatically puts them on a back foot. So, so we, we are trying to capacitate them every six months, twice a year. We do that uh, SMME summit in the town hall where we invite the business forums, we invite all the SMMEs to come and then we do all these presentations. They engage with us, they engage with the directors, even at, uh, at engineering, people that draft the specs to say, but these are the type of things that we expect from you um, and, and so forth. So we've been doing that very greatly. And there's, it, there's been successes. There's a young man, for example, his name is Wes. He got a tender for uh, flower beds, maintaining the flower beds and grass cutting within our municipality. 22-year-old young man. Mm -hmm. He started He started with two, three, uh, what do you call it, Br uh, brush cutters, bush oh, cutters. Bush cutters yeah. And he was cutting with that. Today, he's got a two, two tractors, he's got a panel van that he loads those things on, and he is hiring 20, 20 young men from his area who are also local. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there are successes, we're doing our part. But I also want to say, our local businesses and our smaller businesses, don't now when you got a tender, Manjo Tengi Golf 7 GTI. Yeah. Okay. And then you put a construction light on top of the GTI now. You are driving on site. Mm. You don't give back to the business. So that is what sometimes disadvantages them as well, is mm. that they go for the luxury things first. They don't invest back into the business. Instead of buying a TLB, they don't buy a TLB, so they'll rather go and rent a TLB at a higher rate. This is why then their costing is too high. Now the people that are already established, they own the plant already. They own the TLB, the grader, everything. So their cost and their pricing will obviously be lower. So mm. Tina is a small business. Instead of investing back into my business, I buy the GTI. Yeah. So there's a lot of uh, community or uh, uh, awareness and education that still needs to happen our businesses, for our businesses. And this is why we have these summits regularly. What about education? Are you maybe trying to, to do something with, with education? We, we know that in our municipalities there will be certain skills that it's very rare to find. You will find technical directors are even coming from other municipalities. Are you investing in education as well? We are, uh, from the mayoral budget. So, so I get a lot of requests from youngsters to say, listen, mayor, I would like to go to school. And um, we invest in them. And when I came into office, uh, I, uh, there was a concept that I had in my mind. I said, you know, I want to start with someone who is local, to send them to school, let them go do, for example, a, a course in electrical. And uh, 
once we, we send that person to school, uh, once they are done and they are qualified, we then look at employing this particular individual. Because now we've given them the skill and now we've offered them employment. They can start as an intern, as an internship to learn, give them the workplace experience, and then with the possibilities of employing that particular person. So we are putting together a skills development center in Savannah City. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is where we're going to look at, because we can't all be doctors and lawyers yeah. or politicians. We need people that will actually do the work, put the boots on and get on the ground as well. Mm -hmm. So many of the young people that I've spoken to have come to me to say, Mayor, I want to do plumbing. I want to do something maybe in plumbing. I want to become a plumber. I want to become an electrician. I want to become an engineer. And we, this is why we then decided to put a budget together in the mayor's office that is able to assist these youngsters. So in November, we're going to be having a youth summit where I'm going to make a very big announcement. I think uh, you guys are invited. Come and listen. Uh, my media officer, she's listening to me. Mm -hmm. So I'm telling her now already that she needs to invite you. Come and, come and hear for yourself what announcement I'm going to be making together with my partners. I'm working with the private sector to take a whole lot of youngsters of Midfal, take them to school, let's get them, give them that skill, give them that capacity, so and also try to offer them internship programs in the municipality with the possibility of employing them. Yes. Within our municipalities, people are saying we've got people that, you know, they, got, they don't have capacity. In terms of capacitating people that you have already, yeah. are there programs to make sure that they keep up with the times? Yes, of course. We, we, we offer incentives to our employees, so even including even councillors now, politicians as well. So we believe in going to school. So we're forever upgrading the, the skills of our employees from, you know, this is not only higher level employees, I'm talking about even general workers. So across board, we take you to school um, up to the value of 25,000 rand. So that is what we can afford. So you can then apply in our corporate services department if you want to go or embark on your studies, you apply there and we assist you with that 25,000 rand. But there's a condition to it. If you fail, you have to pay the money back. So, you know, that, this is to teach people responsibility because, you know, in, in society, if people get things for free, they also don't uh, really look after it or appreciate it at that level. But if you know, Guti, if I'm going to fail this thing, I'll have to pay it back. So we haven't had such as yet. So people that have embarked on their educational studies have actually uh, passed and we've never had to recoup the money back from them. So that is also to boost staff morale mm. and to ensure that uh, we also retain our employees. Because I can tell you now, uh, one of the biggest frustrations I sit with is that our employees are being poached by bigger municipalities, metropolitan municipalities, you know, city of Joburg, Tswane, Ekurleni, those big ones, um, mm. because uh, they off obviously offer a better remuneration package than we do because we are a smaller municipality to them. So we, we, this is why we're trying to, to offer those incentives, just to try to keep them, yes. to keep them here. We even pay for um, their professional uh, association uh, membership certificates or licenses yes. that they occupy. So all our engineers are members of those associations. We pay for that also. So that's all part of boosting staff morale. As okay. well. Majoro, yeah. you've said a mouthful. Your last yeah. words to the people of the mid Valley in South Africa in general. I want to say to my residents, they must continue paying for the services. Okay. Um, we appreciate them paying for, for the service. This is why we we can afford to do what we do on a daily basis, but also to say that uh, there's still a lot of uh, work that needs to be done. We are committed um, uh, and we will work hard to ensure that we, we please everyone in our community and that, yeah, um, they must keep supporting us. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you so much. Thanks so much.